Hi guys, um, so I just wanted to be able to show you my last iteration of the Hubson. Now, I just want to give you a little bit of a tip to why you may always find jello in your, in your picture after a while of flying one of these. And it's no fault of Hubson's really, it's no fault of anybody's, is that if you want to fly it, you're going to, you're going to fly it. But what happens is because there's a, these are not very rigid, these, uh, these frames, there's a lot of twisting. There's this one that's been used and no matter what I do, even from putting tape around it in a couple of places on each arm to try and make it more rigid, uh, brand new props on it, I get jello. I got jello before with them and I have found a way of getting around the jello. One, you can get yourself another shell and the other shell will be like when you first got your hubs and it's brand new brand new props nice and rigid i mean that is rigid but the problem is of course when you fly it and you're going to want to fly it it's a great looking little craft is you start getting this um you know it's it, it's flexing from left to right and it's and the material itself is uh wearing basically and there's going to be nothing you can do about it. You'll put some more props on it and yeah, it'll seem a bit better, but of course, you know, you're just going to carry on doing this. But hey, that's maybe just part of the course with these types, all right? Um, but one of the great things about this quad, not only is it these looks with these motors, when they quiet, how quiet are these motors? Well, I decided to build another one. It's all over around the motors. Oh, let me just pop these off. Um, yes, because they are so quiet. And this is a little tiny lightweight frame. It's called a uh, Ghost 2, 6 inch. And it's, I think, 85 grams with all the metalwork. And I've only used partial metalwork through these parts. Um, and I've used rubber here for this flight controller and nylon standoffs here. I'm not saying that's going to make it really really um much different on lightness but it still keeps this whole thing without props and without battery just under 250 grams which means i do have a bit of an option for what battery size i can put on there now i can't really go above 3s because i didn't think these motors would probably do very well on 3s and i'm using 3s on these motors and by it is zippy of course it's not going to be like one of the ones that are made specifically to be really zippy you know 12 s batteries and hyper speed motors which these aren't they're only 1600s i wouldn't advise putting uh 3s on seven inch props using seven inch props with these and 3s because that could just burn them out especially if you uh you know you do plenty of punch outs i mean they probably would burn them out um, but with the 3S and 6 inch, this works great. And I've done punch out after punch out with this. Not continuously, I'm not going to just try and you know, break them on purpose. But it's nice, and you get that nice quiet sound. Uh, the ESCs are not the ones out of the Hobson. These wires are, as you can. Well, that's if you've been in your Hobson, you might recognize the wires. But the ESCs aren't they're slightly bigger, and I can program them, which is uh, something I wasn't able to do with the Hobson. ESCs. So yeah, this is my last little iteration. It's not a long distance really, uh, just because of the way it's set up with its horizontal um, antenna system here. You can see that it is uh, eight six eight megahertz in the UK here, nine nine to fifteen. I think it's in the in the US. I don't know what frequency you use elsewhere. Sorry guys. Um, but so it is you know it's pretty good it can get a range but it's you know i prefer it to be like the way the other one was built with the antenna going up and down at the back just so i can you know orientate my antenna the same and um always have a reasonable you know, image it's got a um it's got a compass on it with a gps uh it's got a hd recording even though when i put a bit of footage up you'll see i'm gonna be taking this out of here I think it's just not doing it any justice. I can get past the props in the image. And you can see, you know, when you're looking at things <clears throat> like close to a tree or something like that, you sort of uh, dismiss the props a bit like um, 
window wipers on a car when you're driving in the rain. But you know, if you were going to pick it up for trying to do some sort of real photography or something, you couldn't really do that. Got a um, underneath there, up at the top of this uh, this top plate, is a um, video transmitter and power distribution board here, flight controller. Um, this is, I think it's, yes it is, it's the Matek F405 STD, which is the standard, which also means that if you wanted to, um, this one at the minute is set up, I believe, on SBUS, and you can put autopilot on here. Autopilot, now I tried it on a wing um, board here, but the only problem is with autopilot is you need to have everything else working as well, Mavlink and all this sort of stuff. And well, just for the sake of trying to get wing back up in the air again, I'm going to actually put um, put iNav back on here because I love iNav and I've been doing some updates as well. I've not even gotten around to looking at it yet. Um, I'm going to put just so I can you know, chuck it up in the air and fly it again. And I'll probably get myself because I do like it. And I got my A2 as well. I did my A2. Um, and I'll probably get myself a pick hawk or something for autopilot if I wanted to use that. I'd like to be able to, it just seems a lot more going on for the old missions and stuff and that would always be good to play with. So yeah, this is it, this is the last iteration, this is um, the very last thing I can use off the Hubson. And it is quite nice, I'm going to put a little bit of flight footage up, I'm, um, there's not a great deal to say in it. I mean, I'm not trying to sell you this. So I'm not going to go through all deep through the specs. I'll tell you, it's got a one kind of hybrid in there. Um, it's a TBS uh, unified video transmitter. Uh, the Matek. Uh, what's this? Matek. Um, I'll stick it up on the screen. Uh, and the Matek uh, 405 STD. I told you this is the uh, Matek uh, U Hub. UAV hub or hub 3 it's one of the cheaper um, but it's great it's got plenty of 5 volts um, current on there if you need to use that and I do on this quite a bit um, yeah, that's it oh yeah we're using a um, TBS uh, nano uh, receiver as well I quite like them they're very small and of course I get to use my TBS standard radio transmitter I seem to be so cheap shifting over to another one when I bought the TBS uh, in the first place so hmm yep I'll check a little bit of flight footage up and we'll just have a little nose at that okay guys so um, so this is it this is it flying about this is in the top right hand side you can see the image that I get from the pilot's view the pilot camera and of course the, the bigger images obviously the HD now I can't remember what settings I've got the HD in it could be 1080 uh, whatever speed I, I can't remember just because I um, I didn't check huh. sorry about that but yeah it's, it's a nice little it's a very lightweight if you can see look I'm only using where are we on 11.7 volts and I'm using like 25 26 27 percent throttle Yes, I think I've had around 15 minutes, maybe a little bit over 15 minutes if I push it. And we're not going to get to see that here. This is just a little tiny bit of the, the, the flight footage, just so you can see what I can get to see. I did my A2, uh, which means I can fly up to 500 grams uh, in these public areas. Um, but of course, I'm not allowed to let it go out of my sight. I'm not allowed to do anything else. So I've found that if I just sit up here quiet in this field, I can just keep going around figure eights in front of me. It's really put the hobby into a really high esteem for me. I really love the idea that the shut down Gatwick Airport just to prove a point. Oh, you're not allowed to say things like that, are you? I must correct myself. Censored, censored, snip it out. Hey, trees, trees are nice. So uh, when I'm looking you know, at the trees there, I'm not really looking at the propellers or anything. I don't really care uh, that they're there. It's just a fly around. Um, yeah, the A2 was basically just uh, re 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 back some stuff out of the CAP 722 and um, pay 100 quid for it. So that was all good. You don't even have to do a practical, so <laughs> no one knows if you can fly or not. But uh, And of course, after 20, uh, 20, end of December 22, I won't even be able to fly this. I'll only be able to fly things that I buy from 
China and they're approved um, or I have to find some private land somewhere to, to fly <sighs> the fun of freedom it sort of took the sails out took the wind out of the sails a bit but I'm not supposed to be moaning about this I'm not supposed to moan about these things it was all good it's for the protection of everybody yes I'm sorry I'm not wearing my mask there. I should be wearing a mask, shouldn't I? I'm wearing a mask now. It's only safe. You don't want to get computer virus. Uh, you never know what that sort of thing. Okay, we've got 99%. Poof, no no mess on the imagery, which is nice. You have a little bit of a settle out here. Still needs a bit of tuning, and this isn't my best uh, my best uh, capture, or whatever you might call it, when you just let it drop down to the ground. But that's it, guys. You know, you heard me whinging on. Sorry about that. Uh, and I'll speak to you in the next one.